Now it's time for our latest edition in our Eat Right Live Well series. Today, Katie Sampaio shows us which cooking oils sh we should be using and how to keep them safe. Take a look. Hi everyone, Katie here. Today I'm going to talk to you about oils, how to cook with them, how to buy them, and how to properly store them because this is something that is really, really confusing and a lot of people do not get it right and then who knows what you're eating. So the first thing that I want to talk about are the colors of the bottles and the types of bottles that these oils are in. When you're looking for oils, good high quality oils, you want to make sure that they're in a glass bottle most of the time. Glass bottle or a tin can. And the other thing that you want to look for is the color. With oils like olive oil, which are these two right here, you want to make sure that they're this dark green color, not clear. If you're buying any olive oils that are clear, that's damaging the oils. So if this is made purposely to block out light, just like a, your sunglasses would. So that's why they're this color. They're not this color just to look great, but there's, there's, it's this color to protect the oil, to protect the chemical structure and its flavor. So make sure that you're not buying these oils in plastic, okay? The other thing with all of these oils, you're gonna wanna store them in a cool, dark place. What a lot of people end up doing is they leave the oil out on the counter next to the oven because it's easy to grab or maybe next to the dishwasher. And this is something that's a big no-no because heat is coming in from both of those areas and that can destroy the oil. And when that oil is destroyed, it's going to not only taste really bad, but it's going to ruin all the health benefits of the oil. It actually can turn it quite dangerous to consume. Um, the other thing here, I noticed this oil on the end, I'm just going to already say that vegetable oil is something I don't recommend eating and it's also in a plastic bottle. I think it's not good for you at all. It's loaded with hydrogenated oils which pretty much just turn everything into solid fat in your body so we don't want that. Now as far as the different types of oil for cooking, you should cook with different oils depending on if you're frying foods or sauteing foods or if you're eating the oils cold. So the oils over here on this side are all great for really high cooking temperatures. I'm talking about when you're frying or you're cooking something around 375 or over 400 degrees, whether you know on the stovetop or in the oven. So avocado oil is really, really great for cooking foods at a higher temperature. And then olive oil, I'm sorry, uh, grapeseed oil is another one that can withstand really high temperatures as well. Sesame oil is pretty good for stir fries, higher temperatures, same with ghee. Coconut oil can be somewhere in the middle, whether it's refined or unrefined, and that goes for all oils. When you have unrefined, it's going to be better for baking and for things that are at a lower temperature. When you have refined oils, that's when you're gonna wanna be able to use them. And the, when you're frying something or cooking something at a much higher temperature. So over here, the last one I have is sunflower oil. This is unrefined, so it's really good for more of those dressings, something that's served cold. Olive oil fa usually falls somewhere in the middle. Olive oil and coconut oil generally are somewhere in the middle for cooking. You know, something around 325 to 375 max would be really good for these oils. So when I, what I recommend in your kitchen, having a staple of around three oils, one for really high cooking temperatures when you're frying something, one for when you're sauteing, and one that's maybe a flavored oil that you can use to mix up for salads or for cooking at medium to higher temperatures. So for me, I always like to have avocado oil. I like to have olive oil. And then I like a good ghee, coconut oil, or sesame oil for my more flavored oils that can pretty much cover you know, the high and low heating temperatures. So I hope you found this to be super helpful uh, when cooking in the kitchen. If you guys have, want more quick and easy tips and recipes, go ahead and check out my number one best-selling cookbook, Eat to Thrive, the Anti-Diet Cookbook, or check out my website, katiesampio.com. Got a ton of information like this on there. And with that, guys, back to you at the studio. Well, that was really interesting. She had like eight different uh, oils there. I didn't and even know some of those existed, to be totally Well, honest. you know, I've heard of some of them. And what I was thinking about when she was talking is, yes, you know, some are healthier than others, mm -hmm. you know, when, when you cook. But then I was thinking about some of the other benefits that some of those oils have. Like I noticed that she had grapeseed oil, and mm -hmm. a lot of women use that for stretch marks, okay, you know, to okay. keep stretch so there's marks all kinds away. Of different, um, um, coconut oil is mm -hmm. good for your skin. Yeah, you can cook definitely. with it. 
good for your hair. Hey, I just really like olive oil because I think it tastes good. Olive so. oil, yeah, that's that's good. I I prefer to do canola oil in okay. my everyday cooking. Okay. And but sometimes I do get fancy and I break yes. out some olive oil. It's there expensive, so. Canola it is, is more that's affordable. True. That is very yeah. true. <laughs> well, we've got more uh, for more tips and healthy recipes. You can visit our website at 47abc.com.